Today on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast, I'm going to give you my review of The Suicide Squad and my first impression of the new Hawkeye trailer. And we'll get to all of that right after this. Want to learn about disciple-making movement methods and receive coaching to help you start one in your neighborhood? The Philosophy and Strategy of Disciple-Making Movements class teaches biblical and philosophical basis of disciple-making methods while revealing the strategies that are unique to DMM and Discovery Bible Study. Understand the specifics of what it takes to be part of a movement of God where you live. To learn more, go to christiannerdsunite.com slash cdm. That's christiannerdsunite.com slash cdm. Space is limited and not all that apply can be accepted, so apply now. Classes start September 16th. Now, back to the show. This week, we kind of have a little two for one, uh, DC and Marvel. I want to give you my review of the Suicide Squad that I promised a couple of weeks ago. Um, And I also wanted to talk to you about the trailer for Marvel's Disney Plus show, Hawkeye, that just dropped this week. Um, Actually, as of this recording, it just dropped this morning. So I definitely wanted to talk about it because I'm, I'm super excited about it. But before we get to that, I do want to look at just a bit of scripture. Let's look at 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love his life to see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, today's show has a lot to say about turning from evil to good, or at least doing it for a little while. (laughs) Uh, In the Suicide Squad, we see a lot of villains choose to do good and doing what is right in the end and becoming heroes uh, of sorts, if only for a little while. And in Hawkeye, we see one of the good guys, you know, Clint Barton's somewhat evil past. uh, If you call viciously killing bad guys in his Ronin persona, evil uh, coming back to haunt him. Either way, this passage makes it clear that we must turn from evil and do good. And I just want to challenge you to do good wherever you can find good to do. And as verse 11 says, seek peace and pursue it even in the comment section of the Christian Nerds Unite Facebook page, if you know what I mean. Uh, (laughs) Well, say what, let's get right down to it. Let's start with The Suicide Squad. This is for sure one of those movies that I watched so that maybe you don't have to, uh, but I'll clarify that in a few moments. Let's start with some general info. Uh, The movie is rated R, so be aware. Now, R can mean lots of things, uh, so I want to give you the rundown of why Suicide Squad in particular is R-rated. It does have several F-bombs, lots of language. Um, That right there, just the F-bombs, will put any movie into an R rating. Generally, the rating systems say if you say the F-bomb more than once, you are an R-rated movie. Uh, There is tons of over-the-top cartoonish violence. Uh, It's way over the top. Gore appears on screen, 
but it's like I said, it's, it's very cartoonish gore. It is definitely gross. <laughs> There's lots of it, a lot more than I was expecting. Uh, I expected some, but it, it really goes there. I think the sheer volume of these and that it's so explicitly on screen it's shown uh, would have put this movie into an R rating, even without the language. Um, there are lots of jokes around sex or vulgar sexual gestures and sexual activity that's off screen. So uh, those things could have pushed it into an R as well. Uh, there are two or three shots of momentary nudity. Uh, they're fast and there's nothing that's significant happening in those shots. Uh, if they were removed, it honestly would not change the movie at all. Uh, another reason this movie is rated R. Um, you know, personally, I don't think it ever needed to be there. Uh, this movie would have been R without those shots, but just so that you know, they are there. Um, they are really, really quick. And uh, in fact, there was one I didn't actually notice because I wasn't paying attention. I blinked and I missed it. Um, and then going back, I saw it at that time and I was like, oh, I totally missed that the first time uh, because other people had mentioned it. And I'm like, I don't remember seeing this. Uh, so th they are really quick, but they are there. Be aware. So some movies could be cut down to PG. I'm not sure this movie ever could be cut down to PG if for no other reason than the gore that is on screen, because a lot of it happens during significant moments in the, the movie. So uh, I, I'm doubtful this movie could ever truly be cut down to a PG-13. Opening weekend box office was $26 million, and uh, domestic total so far is about $54 million. Uh, now that's up against a $185 million budget. And so it's not done so well, but in post COVID terms for an R rated movie, it's actually considered a success. Uh, so that's kind of where we are right now in the, uh, in the way movies are. If you're not familiar with the suicide squad, it is a team of villains. Uh, they're all already in prison. Um, they're sent on very dangerous missions hence the suicide squad, uh, that they're not expected to come back from. And they're sent by a kind of pseudo governmental agency. And if they act up during the mission, they will be killed using an implant that basically blows their head off. Uh, each member is chosen for their own special skills, or at least that's the idea. Amanda Waller puts the team together and sends them on the missions. She generally has some kind of blackmail or some hold over the ones she's chosen. You know, there's something she has over their heads. Uh, something generally goes wrong, and there's often an ulterior motive for the mission that the team wasn't even aware of. And in this particular instance, we actually find that there were two teams sent in and one team didn't even know that the other team was going to be there. One team was specifically designed to be a distraction so that the other team could land on the Island and take care of business. Now uh, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but here's my basic review. Uh, it was a fun movie. It really is a fun movie, um, much better story wise than the first Suicide Squad film. Uh, it fits much better with the actual comics. It feels more like what the comics uh, presented to us. If gore or language or any nudity is a problem for you, then this would be a movie I would say just avoid. Um, I would not recommend this movie for children of any age. Uh, for those reasons, if you can get past those items or those items aren't a big concern for you, then like I said, it is a fun story. Uh, the characters are interesting. The acting is really, really good. I'm not a fan of John Cena. 
And uh, John Cena is really trying to make a name for himself right now. He is in lots of movies this year. Uh, And uh, as an actor, I'm not super fond of him. Um, You know, he was a good wrestler. Uh, That was kind of, you know, fun watching him wrestle. Um, He was kind of after my time of watching wrestling. But, uh, you know, I've seen him in action. Uh, He does well and he presents well when he has the mic. But as peacemaker, he's not bad. Uh, now what I mean by that, I'm not saying he's a good actor. I'm saying that this particular part fits his acting skills very well. Um, so he plays a really good peacemaker. I, I think it's a good fit for him. And, uh, just so you know, there is a peacemaker show that will be on hbo max we don't know exactly when that's going to be produced um, but i understand that it has started shooting so we'll have to keep an eye on that Uh, my guess is from watching the suicide squad that it will have very similar tone and feel uh peacemaker will be vulgar and inappropriate um so just be aware uh Idris Alba it is blood sport in this movie. He was absolutely great. Idris Alba has been a fantastic actor in everything I've seen him in. Um, I honestly, I didn't miss Will Smith at all. Having Idris Alba as blood sport was a great choice. Um, since we didn't have dead shot for Will Smith, they're very similar characters, So we get the same basic idea. They both had a daughter that Amanda Waller is kind of holding over their heads in some way, shape or form. Uh, So we kind of have the same character, but honestly, I think Idris Alba did better as Bloodsport than Will Smith did as Deadshot. Um, The movie was very much an ensemble cast, and that is something that I think was super important to this particular film. Uh, The previous film, it felt more like a Will Smith movie uh, as Deadshot and a Margot Robbie movie as um, Harley Quinn, two separate movies that they tried to smash together. And, And it, it just didn't work. It, it was, it was too choppy. It was, there was too many storylines. We had the Joker in there and he, he, he was fine, but he didn't need to be there. And it didn't make sense for why he was there. He was just there so that Margot Robbie had more of a story. I, it was very confusing. This felt more like an ensemble cast. Um, the mo- new movie is much more cohesive. It makes much more sense. Although Harley Quinn does kind of get her own little story arc. And we do have the, uh, the rest of the team having their story arc, but the two story arcs blend so much better. Um, they don't feel like they're fighting each other for attention. Um, one feels like it is building off of the other. Uh, Obviously, lots of characters die early in this film. Uh, If you've heard me talk about this on any other shows, you will hear that I said, I expect the majority of these people to die within the first five minutes of the film. I was not wrong this time. (laughs) Now, I was wrong about who died. (laughs) Uh, my prediction was that, um, polka dot man would not make it through the first five minutes of the film. I was wrong about that and, uh, not to give you spoilers, but by the end of the movie, I was definitely rooting for polka dot man. I actually really, really liked his character. It was super fun. Uh, he was definitely one of the unexpected breakout characters of the film, Uh, along with King Shark, who is a fully CGI character um, voiced by Sly Stallone. And, uh, you know, if you didn't know that it was Sylvester Stallone uh, voicing King Shark, you might not have recognized it because he doesn't have a lot of lines and it's super processed. But uh, King Shark is a really fun character throughout the film. Uh, He's a great bit of comic relief along with Polka Dot Man. Um, But I would say Polka Dot Man was more of a 
superhero in the film uh, than most of the other characters, actually. There were a couple of plot twists. They were kind of telegraphed, um, but they were still fun to see play out. Uh, you know, there were things I was expecting um, early on. There was this bit about, uh, you know, Amanda Waller is explaining why bloodshot is a good option for the uh, suicide squad. And then she immediately tells him why peacemaker is a good fit for the squad. And he makes the comment. He does exactly what I do. Why do they, why does he need to be on the team? So that's obviously that's going to play into the storyline later on. And it absolutely did. And uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to go into all of it. I'm not going to give you spoilers today for the majority of the film, but you know, that was a fun little bit. Uh, It was, it was a plot twist that we saw coming way early in the film. Just weren't quite sure how it was going to play out. Now, if you're looking for amazing, filmmaking, uh, amazing storytelling, you know, deep dives into character development and uh, emotion. (sighs) This is probably not the movie for you. (laughs) There are some moments. There is some character development. There are some touching things that happen during the movie or memories that happened in the movie that are, are really great moments. But this is not an art film. Uh, This is what I call a popcorn movie. It's enjoyable. And even if you're not really fully engaged, like I wasn't the first time I watched it, it was still enjoyable. You'll be able to pick right back up where you left off if you missed two or three minutes of the film. Uh, Just keep in mind, it is not for everyone. And I would not recommend this movie for most viewers. Uh, So, When I say I watched it so that you don't have to, it's all about the gore and vulgar humor. If that is for you, this may be a movie for you. If that is not for you, then I watched this so that you don't have to. Now, let's talk about Hawkeye. (laughs) Uh, This was a surprise to me. I was not planning on talking about Hawkeye today. I was only planning on talking about the Suicide Squad. But Hawkeye did drop the brand new trailer and uh, it just looked so good. I couldn't not talk about it. I couldn't wait another week. So Marvel dropped the first trailer of the new Disney Plus show Hawkeye today. Um, Well, yesterday, if you're listening to this on release day. Uh, But for me, it was today. Uh, We have a release date for the show. It's going to be November 24th. So this will be a Marvel Wednesday release, much like What If and Loki. So that with that in mind, I would expect Book of Boba Fett to be a Friday release like The Bad Batch was. And uh, we are expecting the Book of Boba Fett to release sometime in December. So I would expect these to overlap in some way. Um, looks like there's going to be eight episodes. So with a November 24th release, we will see this roll over into 2022. We get to see Jeremy Renner's Clint Barton Hawkeye reprise his role. And uh, we get a brand new actor. Hallie Steinfeld is going to come in as Kate Bishop, the new Hawkeye. If you're not familiar with Kate Bishop as Hawkeye, There is a Marvel comic series. It is worth a read um, that it's just called Hawkeye. And uh, the art style is a little different, but it looks great. The storytelling is amazing. It's like I said, it's definitely worth a read. And it goes into the Kate Bishop story, who she is, where she came from. And uh, that all plays into some interesting things. She is definitely tied up with some organized crime organizations. Um, In this film, it looks like possibly her mother is part of that crime organization in some way, shape, or form. It's a little unclear from the trailer, but we think that's where it's going. So 
Kate Bishop arrives, so we have another Young Avenger coming to the screen finally. Um, IMDb also says that Florence Pugh's Yelena Belova will be in the show. So, you know, that was kind of hinted at in the end credit scene of Black Widow. So this is not super surprising, uh, but we don't see her in the trailer and it's unclear where she's going to show up in the in the show is she just going to be in the first episode is she going to show up in the last episode is she going to be the big bad guy for this show i don't think so but she is listed on imdb expect her to show up at least to do some kind of cameo uh imdb also says that we will have a character named jack who is called the swordsman in the comics um and uh this person in the comics was a circus star and uh, he actually helped train hawkeye so that's kind of an interesting thing we're not quite sure how that's going to play into this particular series maybe flashbacks not sure uh and at least two characters that we know have some kind of ties to the kingpin in the comics. So will we see Vincent D'Onofrio's uh, kingpin from the Netflix Daredevil series show up? We can hope. <laughs> I really hope so. That has been a rumor for a while. And uh, I think the inclusion of these two characters is probably why it has been a rumor. Uh, I, I really hope he does show up. I'm not convinced, but uh, with organized crime being a big part of Kate Bishop's background and her backstory, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a stretch to bring Kingpin in as the head of this crime syndicate, whatever that looks like. Now, let's kind of get into the trailer. Hawkeye is going to be a Christmas series. So um, for those of you who are diehard fans and that diehard is a Christmas movie, then this is also a Christmas series. Uh, uh, we hear, uh, you know, Christmas music in the background. Uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, and uh, he, Clint Barton actually says the line, I'll be home for Christmas. Uh, so this is just prior to Christmas. And kind of the whole goal of the series is for him to accomplish whatever it is he needs to accomplish so he can get home to his family. But right now it's set in New York. It's all happening in New York. And uh, we see him leaving the Rogers, the musical, a Captain America musical. <laughs> and we see them see him and his kids leaving the theater. Uh, we even get to see a small clip of the show later on in the trailer. And we'll get to that here in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Makes me laugh every time I think about it. Um, so we get a glimpse of a new masked vigilante in town. And uh, there is some speculation that this is the return of the Ronin persona that uh, was active during the blip. Uh, you know, this was the persona that Barton took on during the, the blip and, you know, he killed a lot of organized crime bosses, um, just slaughtered lots and lots of people. And, uh, you know, there's a spot in end game where uh, Natasha's like, I don't even want to go find him because of what he's doing. So, uh, you know, that goes back to my comment earlier. Is that evil? Is it evil to slaughter bad guys? That's something for the philosophers to decide. Uh, but that activity definitely is going to come back to haunt him in this show. Now, the voiceover says he is making up for lost time, and that's why he's hanging out with his kids. Um, so this is definitely post-end game, like all the other Disney Plus shows so far. It's a little unclear how long post blip it has been. We can see something in Barton's ears. Now, this is kind of interesting. Um, very likely, we will get some info on his hearing loss. Now, if you go, well, I didn't know he had hearing loss. 
this has been addressed in the comics a couple of different ways, uh, but this is this appears to be at the very beginning of the series before anything exciting really happens at all, and uh, he already has the hearing aids in. So expect this to be a part of the show in some way, shape, or form. Um, in that scene, he looks like his family is being taken into protective custody. So, you know, I've heard some people say, well, that, those are more like the, the earpieces that the Avengers wore. I don't think that's where this is going. I really do think this is going to be a hearing loss issue. Another hint here is that the Hawkeye logo could also be inferring this. Uh, if you see the logo, you see the the circles radiating out from the title. Now that could represent a target. But in the in the trailer, every time you see these circles, they actually are spreading outward uh, much like sound waves moving. So I think this is actually going to play a much bigger part in the show than the trailer is hinting at. We shall see exactly how that plays out, but I think that is where we're going. Uh, we do finally see Kate Bishop in action after all this. Um, she says some people say that she's the best archer in the world. And then we hear Barton say, are you one of those people? So I don't know. We've seen this before where Marvel plays around and pulls lines from one place and puts them in another place. I don't know that that's actually where this conversation came from. I think maybe Marvel just forced that in there. Uh, it It's fun, but uh, I don't think so. But the fact that she does say that some people say she's the best archer in the world, you know, she definitely is proud of her abilities, if nothing else. And uh, then we see lots of action. Uh, we see Barton's amazing reflexes in action. We see Barton in some bad situations and taking a beating and <laughs> recovering. And, uh, you know, at one point we actually see him captured and tr Kate trying to save him, but not being very successful. You know, then we see some random non-action scenes. We see a dog dressed up for Christmas. Uh, we actually get a clip of the Rogers musical. I love it. We can see dancers as Steve and Thor and Loki and Iron Man and Natasha and Clint Barton himself. And the worst Hulk costume I have ever seen. Um, we see some random New Yorkers and a few Chitari soldiers. So it looks like it's supposed to be Battle of New York from the first Avengers movie. It, it's super meta. Um, I actually hope we get to see more of it in the show. I, <laughs> I don't know why I want to see this. I just think it's hysterical. This really makes me think of the play that happens in Thor Ragnarok. Um, I really want to see more of it. <laughs> Then we see something that looks suspiciously like a medieval arts fair or a medieval LARP. It's a little unclear. Uh, if you're not familiar with what a LARP is, that's a live action role play. Uh, and maybe this is where the swordsman comes in. I could definitely see that fitting. Um, we mentioned him earlier. Uh, I don't know exactly where he's going to show up in the show. So this kind of makes sense could be a flashback um, or there could be a medieval arts fair happening in New York in the park. Uh, I think this will be a flashback. <laughs> we also get to see Barton and Bishop show off their archery skills. And uh, you know, this is some fun that they have. Then in some sillier moment, we see Kate Bishop blow up a moving van with the words, trust a bro moving company on the side. Now, why is that significant? Well, because the expectation is that the big bad guys in this show are going to be the tracksuit mafia. What a name. Um, they come into play in the uh, in the Marvel comic series called Hawk Hawkeye. 
Um, they are notorious for saying the word bro all the time. So the trust of bro moving company, having the mob working as a moving company, it, it just, you can't, it just writes itself. I, this is just all fits together. Um, I, I have a little bit of trouble with the Kingpin running a company called the trust a bro moving company, but maybe the tracksuit mafia will just be the start of the bad things that happen. Um, as I've already said, at least two actors are cast to play characters that are associated with the Kingpin. Uh, you know, he's a big New York mob boss in the Marvel comics. So uh, hopefully we get to see him as well. Lots of Marvel humor sprinkled in throughout the trailer. So expect that in the show as well. The action sequences look great. The cinematography looks great. Uh, you know, it's really spot on. Uh, a few effects that we see in the trailer are very well done. Uh, I expect this is going to be a super solid show. And I'm actually looking forward to it much more than I had. Uh, I always thought it could be good. I just wasn't sure where it would go. Seeing this trailer, I really, really want to see this now. Uh, now, here's the thing. I'm not sure where this show is taking us. WandaVision took us to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. That was, you know, that's pretty plain to see. WandaVision is playing with space and time and messing things up. Doctor Strange is going to have to deal with that. Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was wrapping up the who really gets the shield from Endgame and is going to lead us into the next Captain America, which is eventually, hopefully going to lead us into the next Avengers and, you know, who's going to lead the team. Those two shows have pretty clear cut directions they came from and where they're taking us. With Hawkeye, other than tr trying to tie together a post credit scene from Black Widow and the fact that Kate Bishop is a prime candidate for the Young Avengers, which is not yet slated is not yet announced at all. I don't know where this is taking us. Um, all the other shows have pointed to something that's already been announced. This one, I'm not sure where it could be going. Um, unless we're going to for sure start announcing the Young Avengers soon. And uh, what's a Young Avengers look like? My guess if we do Young Avengers, it will be a, a Disney plus Marvel show. I don't think we're going to see a Young Avengers movie. I could be wrong, but with the number of actors they would need to make that happen and the way they have slowly been uh, introducing the, these characters, I think if they're going to do it, it's going to be on Disney Plus. It's going to be an eight episode mini series like many of the other shows. But like I said, it hasn't been announced. Um, there's really not even been a hint of it. It's just people like me keep saying, well, there's one more pe person for the Young Avengers. When are you going to announce it? Um, you know, now that being said, Disney could be announcing new movies and Disney plus shows sometime in December. They did that a couple of years ago and they did that in during an investor day in December. The investor day is already over for this year and there were announcements made nothing about young Avengers. So it's unclear where we're going with this. Um, I really, really hope the show is good. It looks really good. I think the story could be compelling. Uh, you know, Clint Barton passing off the torch to Kate Bishop is, is a great story. Um, it's unclear to me why they have any connection right now. Um, it, you know, they just meet. They're both good archers. But where is the emotional connection? Why is he invested in training her? Uh, why is he invested in passing off the mantle? 
I don't know yet. And then the big question is, what is this show supposed to do for us in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Where does it take us next? And that, I think, is the big question that is unanswered as of yet. Well, that's all I have for us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, click. Just click all those buttons down below. And uh, if you can, give us a review. Uh, reviews help us you know, better how we're doing and uh, as well helps other people find the show. Um, you can find all of our social links and our online store and links to our YouTube channel at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. And while you're there, click on the support tab to check out our Patreon. We would love to have your support. And shout out to Joe and Jared, our current Patreons. We really appreciate your support. Well, before I go, I do want to leave you with this. As I said earlier, I want to challenge you to do good everywhere you can do good and leave you with this blessing. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word, and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people. In the power of your spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll see you next week. Blessings.